Every day, truckloads of food arrive at the zoo, bringing 300 kilos of meat, 400 kilos of fruits and vegetables, 750 kilos of grains, pulses and bran, and 6,000 kilos of grass and green fodder. Only the freshest and best grade of food is fed to our animals, and all items are subjected to stringent quality checks. Our kitchen staff prepares the right type of food for each species. It's a race against time every morning, catering to the many hungry mouths waiting for their breakfast. Irrespective of holidays, bad weather, earthquakes or riots, food has to be delivered several times a day to the enclosures. Of course, where there's an abundance of food, uninvited guests are never far behind. Many free-living creatures benefit from the banquets that are spread for our animals. In turn, they add colour and gaiety to our zoo. Some of our birds and animals need special food. These scarlet ibis get their bright colouring from the beta-carotene in the food they eat. So to keep them looking beautiful, we include shrimp and grated carrots in their diet. We also breed and raise mealworms because some animals need insects in their diet at least a couple of times a week. Like this African bat fox. We have several species of crocodilians in our collection and they are fed fish on alternate weeks. Our otters, on the other hand, need fresh fish every day. Here comes their keeper with lunch. Visitors to our zoo might regard the animals they see as just specimens. But to us, each one is a distinct individual with its own personality. Mason, one of our chimpanzees, likes to wave at his admirers like a music conductor. Abi, one of our Asian elephants, loves to make his own straw hat. He'll put it on and take it off several times a day. This ostrich pair might look like a happily married couple, but for some reason, the male seems to regard his keeper too as a potential mate. Any time he's nearby, the male will woo him with an elaborate courtship display. Sloth bears, Ganesha and Durgi, also have distinct personalities. They were raised together as cubs and are very attached to each other. Ganesha is the adventurous one and is always getting up to some mischief. His mate Durgi, on the other hand, likes to take it easy. Whenever Ganesha gets bored, he will cajole the reluctant Durgi into a friendly wrestling match.
It's all in good fun and no one gets hurt. Animals at the zoo can also exhibit a surprising level of intelligence. Using a rock to relieve an itch is nothing unusual. But using a branch as a back scratcher? Now that's clever. When his keeper enters the enclosure every morning, Krishna, the hippo, will literally demand a mouthwash. Our male Indian rhino, Virat, knows exactly when it's bath time. He will walk to the bathing area without any prompting and won't leave until he's received a thorough wash. Like Virat, many animals at the zoo develop a close bond with their keepers. But don't be fooled, only their keeper can get this close. Zoo animals can be very dangerous and the rest of us must always stay behind the railings. However, if you would like a closer bond with our animals, you can participate in our adoption program and sponsor the upkeep of any of our animals. As a sponsor, you will get special visit privileges and your support will help take care of some of our feeding expenses. When you see healthy and happy animals at our zoo, it's thanks to the elaborate management protocols we have in place, which are implemented by a staff of nearly 300 people. You may not notice them, but they are everywhere, quietly doing their jobs. Keeping enclosures clean and regularly disinfected forms a large part of every keeper's duties. The main gate and entrances to other sensitive sections also have disinfectant mats to minimize the spread of diseases. Preventive medicine, too, is a crucial aspect of our animal healthcare routine. Today, our veterinary team is preparing to vaccinate the giraffes against foot and mouth disease. The syringe is loaded into a special gun and then fired into the animal's rump. The big males barely flinch when the dart hits home. But next door, the females and their young are already nervous. One by one, the doctors get them all. The vaccine gets injected within seconds after the dart pierces. A couple of flicks of the tail and the dart falls off and will be collected by the keeper. Animals can also get affected by ticks and fleas. Today, it is the turn of these bara singha or swamp deer to receive their periodic treatment for rectoparasites. An organic insect repellent is mixed with water and sprayed in the form of a fine mist as the animals gather to feed. Despite all these precautions, however, animals do get sick sometimes and are treated at our zoo hospital. This sloth bear has been tranquilized and brought in for an X-ray and an ultrasound. Once the doctors diagnose the problem, the animal will be treated and closely monitored. The zoo hospital also houses our animal orphanage. This is Chamundi. She was found abandoned in the wild and sent to us when she was just six months old. Her keeper feeds her a special milk formula several times a day. Like all youngsters, Chamundi can be greedy. After gulping down her milk, 
she will read her playmate's lunchbox. The gar calf must eat quickly before Chamundi finishes everything. Meanwhile, it's feeding time for the other orphans. Sometimes, babies born at the zoo are not properly looked after by their mothers and have to be painstakingly hand-raised. These hyena pups are just a few weeks old, but have insatiable appetites. Hey. They are absolute rowdies and can be quite quarrelsome at feeding time. One of our most popular exhibits is our newly redesigned snake house. Here, you can come face to face with the heaviest snake in the world, the green anaconda from South America or the longest venomous snake, Asia's King Cobra. A male like this one can grow to 18 feet in length and raise nearly one third of its body off the ground. Our walk-in aviaries are also popular as they allow visitors to stroll among the birds. The star attractions in this aviary are the black swans. Our zoo has been a great venue for inspiring a love for nature in young minds. Every year since 1992, about 60 students have been handpicked for a year-long program involving lectures and field visits. The students are taught various aspects of nature conservation, which we hope will instill a lifelong empathy for the natural world. We also pride ourselves as a clean and green zoo and recycle much of the organic waste that is generated. Mega herbivores like rhinos, hippos and elephants eat vast quantities of food. And of course, what goes in does come out. Our keepers have their work cut out, clearing these mini mountains of dung. We ensure that none of this waste goes to waste. From the pens, herbivore dung is sent to our vermicomposting yard, where it is slowly converted to a rich natural fertilizer that keeps our gardens lush and lovely. The best time to visit our zoo is in the morning or the evening, when animals are at their most active. From entry to exit, the pathway through the zoo is 3.2 kilometers, which you can cover in just a couple of hours. But we recommend that you take it slowly to get the most out of your trip. But do avoid the middle of the day if you can, as it's a time when most animals rest. While most visitors come to our zoo to see animals, we also have a great variety of trees from all over the world. Some are as old as the zoo itself. For over a century, these grounds with their magnificent trees and animals have been an important part of Mysuru's rich heritage. It has been our constant endeavor to provide the best conditions for our animals and to ensure that visitors have a memorable day at our zoo. We are immensely proud that what started as a Maharaja's private menagerie has evolved into a vibrant and dynamic public institution. With your continued support, we hope to make Mysuru Zoo even better in the years to come. <laughs>